a reading from wisdom. Then the righteous will stand with great confidence in the presence of those who have oppressed them and those who might make light of their labors. When the unrighteous see them, they will be shaken with dreadful fear, and they will be amazed at the unexpected salvation of the righteous. They will speak to one another in repentance, and in anguish of the spirit, they will groan and say, these are persons whom we once held in derision and made a byword of reproach. Fools that we were. We thought that their lives were madness and that their end was without honor. Why have they been numbered among the children of God? And why is their lot among the saints? Because the hope of the ungodly is like thistledown carried by the wind, and like a light frost driven away by a storm, it is dispersed like smoke before the wind, and it passes like remembrance of a guest who stays but a day. But the righteous live forever, and their reward is with the Lord, the Most High takes care of them. Therefore, they will receive a glorious crown and a beautiful diadem from the hand of the Lord, because with his right hand he will cover them, and with his arm he will shield them. The word of the Lord.
Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God the Almighty and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God it is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night, they need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord.
I look for the Lord. My soul doth wait for him, and in God's word is my trust. May only the word of God be spoken, and may only God's word be heard. Amen. Oh, you're such a saint. Perhaps someone has said these words to you. I know I've heard them and said them. Although I will admit that sometimes they might have been in jest. Imagine a more spiteful and sarcastic, oh, well, aren't you just such a saint? Is that familiar to any of you? If someone has ever responded to something you've done in this way, 
you might think that this particular brand of sainthood is not an ideal to be strived for. I wonder then what it might mean for us to consider on this feast of all the saints. What does it mean to be a saint? And can I mean to be one too? The word saint appears about 70 times in the Bible. And the majority of these instances are in Paul's letters or the epistles. When Paul uses the word saint, it often indicates a certain condition. And that condition is a condition of life. Paul writes of the saints living in community with one another. And as our collect of the day says, one communion, one fellowship in the mystical body of Christ. This is really good news. It's good news because the saints were then and there, and they're also here and now. God has raised up saints in every age. And so saints are living, breathing members of creation. You can find them at school, at church, at sea, in lanes, and certainly as any good Anglican might hope, at tea. <laughs> in fact, I'm looking at them here today. It is important to remember that before they were painted on icons or placed in shrines, the saints we venerate and remember today were living people, people who were born and lived and died, human, just like you and me. Yes, you, we, can all be saints of God. So now the question is, how? What does it take to be a saint? And can I really mean to be one too? Our lesson today gives us a clue. The first lesson reads, the righteous will stand with great confidence in the presence of those who have oppressed them and those who make light of their labors. And the unrighteous will say, these are persons whom we once held in derision and made a byword of reproach, fools that we were. We thought that their lives were madness and that their end was without honor. Why have they been numbered among the children of God? And why is their lot among the saints? So what are the lives of the saints that they should be questioned by others, particularly those in power or those who speak against works of love and compassion? What are the lives of the saints that they should seem like madness to those who walk in darkness, those who do not see and know the light and love of God? A saint is someone who recognizes the need for the work of the kingdom of God in our present time, here and now, taking the risk to bring that kingdom into reality. A saint is someone who has a vision, a vision of what it means to seek and serve Christ in all persons. A saint is someone who prays, enjoys fellowship, and breaks bread with friends and strangers alike. A saint is someone who proclaims the good news of Christ by word and example. I'm hoping that these words sound familiar to most of you. Some of you might have even heard them this morning. I hope also that they do not feel impossible. For it is in baptism that we are called into sainthood, each and every one of us, to show others the love that God has named for each of us, the name that will be on the foreheads of the servants of God. Remember, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. And if this sounds difficult, do not be worried. And this is a clue for later, because God is our helper. And as in all things, 
we will, with God's help. When we take this to heart, we will know that God has already made us saints in God's kingdom. Now we just need to show this to the world. I think it's important, however, to distinguish that to be a saint is not to be a savior. It is sometimes easy for us to be the ones that want to fix everything. To swoop in, perform a one-time fix, to save the world, and to regard the oppressed as less than us, simply because we can help. No, this is not what it means to be a saint. A saint is someone who continually cares for the sick and feeds the hungry day after day. A saint is someone who allies with transgender and gay persons standing with, in front of, behind them as they face injustice. A saint is someone who speaks out against gun violence and defends immigrants and refugees to their leaders no matter how many times a proposed bill that would ensure the safety of the helpless fails to pass Congress. A saint sticks with the oppressed because a saint is someone who knows that they are sitting with the other while they are also sitting with Christ. And so I ask you, do you think you have what it takes to be a saint? God knows you do. Here's my other question, and this one I'd like an answer to. Will you strive for justice and peace and respect the dignity of every human being as saints in the kingdom of God? Friends, may we have the wisdom to seek the guidance of those saints who are in heaven, that our sainthood here on earth might be like theirs, a witness and a testimony to the presence of God, so when God's kingdom comes, we might hear that sweet voice from heaven as it says, Blessed are they who die in the Lord, for they will rest from their labors. But until then, in all that we do, may we, by the grace of God, sing a song of the saints of God, as we mean God helping to be one too. Amen. We remember Christine Robinson Fries, Ada Caputo, Henry Miller Bonner, John Goslin, Barbara Robo Seymour, Jeffrey Rowe Pratt, James Bertram Connaughton, Lois C. Ware, David Alexander Logie, William Alfred Crowther, Maggie Osborne Bradley. We remember John Moore Smith, Herbert Carroll and Lance Ritchie, George Robinson, Peggy Richardson Frise, Florence Close, Samuel Parker, James Steer, Audrey Thaler, Thomas Potter Crolius, Ruth Rommel. Stout, Mickey Hobson, Paul Widener. We remember Arthur Daugherty, Glenn Korf, Amy Vance, the Reverend Dr. H. Boone Porter, Violet M. Porter, 
Michael T. Porter, Ronald McPherson, Vivian McPherson, Dudley Redfield, Beatrice Redfield, Tyler Nose, Philip Dolan, Father Jonathan Voorhees, Barry Weed, Jeanette Charles, Tony Pomponi. We remember Alma Lopez, Martha Healy, Aretha Franklin, Stephen Hawking, Gail Aquila, Peter Di Venere, Robert Kurtz, Jeanette Kurtz, Rita McMahon Todd, Colleen M. Banton, General Robert Franz, John and Louise Besson, Viva Eliers McKee. We remember George Richard Hine, Robert Burian, Sue Griffin, Mark Bowman Jr., Jeffrey Cudlip, Chick Cudlip, Lawrence Duff, Regina Svensson Matthews, the Reverend Kenneth Wayne Anderson, Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Sergo, General Sir Michael Gow, Morris Whitridge Raymond, Virginia Parsons Raymond, Karen Keneally Raymond. We remember Beverly Swift Campbell, James Whitney Campbell, Ruth Cooley Glidden, Robert Thor Thorvald Glidden, Jack Urquhart, Tom Christie, Sarah McCarthy, Ellie Seymour, Matthew Wayne Shepherd, Ed Miletti, Kenneth Gross, Carol Raymond Jan Jennings, Anne Raymond Flickinger. We remember Rosalind Manley, Jack Farrell, William Binet, David Gates, Barbara Harding, Betty Maniotti, Annie Benfield, Evan Jones, Robert Donovan, Mildred Hahn, Nancy Riley, Ursula Jimenez, John Moody, Olga Rosenfield, and Anna Shea.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore.